Hello, hi guys. This is C.A. Balakrishna from lecturepedia.in. How are you? Hope you people are doing well. Even I am fantastic. Now, in the today's class, we will be revising Caro 2020. I will be trying to complete this video within half an hour so that you will be able to quickly revise entire Caro before the exam. Okay? And if you wanted to revise auditing standards, I have already uploaded all the revisions, uh, videos of auditing standards on my channel. You can watch them. Okay, in the playlist, you can find them. Now, in this class, we'll revise the Caro, Caro 2020. Basically, this Caro 2020 is applicable from financial year 21-22 onwards. And this Caro 2020 uh, is a additional reporting requirement as per section number 143 subsection 11 of companies act 2013 and this caro report will be given by the auditor as a annexure to the auditor's report and coming to applicability of caro basically caro is applicable to all the companies including foreign companies except six types of companies what are those six types of companies first one banking company insurance company section 8 company one person company and small company and later we have private limited company which is not a holding or subsidiary of a public company and having paid up share capital plus free reserves of not more than 1 crore rupees and borrowings of not more than 1 crore rupees at any point of time during the year. This is important. Borrowings you have to check at any point of time during the year and turnover of the entity not more than 10 crores during the year. For these types of private companies, the caro is not applicable. So, these are the six types of companies for which caro is not applicable. And there is another important point. Generally, caro is applicable for standalone financial statements, for audit of standalone financial statements. And the caro is not applicable for the audit of consolidated financial statement except class 21. Okay, except to class 21 of Caro, remaining Caro is not applicable to audit of consolidated financial statement. This is important point you have to remember. Now coming to the clauses. Here we will be having 21 clauses. Each clause will be dealing with a separate aspect. Now starting with clause number 1, PP, property, plant and equipment. Under this clause what has to be checked by the auditor? First of all, auditor has to report whether the management is maintaining proper records relating to property, plant and equipment and also intangibles. You should not forget intangibles. Records related to intangibles should also be maintained. After that, the auditor has to check whether management is conducting physical verification of these property, plant and equipment at a reasonable intervals or not. Okay, at reasonable intervals and during such physical verification, in case any discrepancies are noticed, whether the same have been properly dealt in the books of accounts or not even that has to be reported by the auditor and then auditor should check whether the title deeds are in the name of the company or not generally for the properties there will be title deed in the title deed the company's name must be there hope this is clear the title deeds must be in the name of the company and in case during the year if property plant and equipment has been revalued then alter has to see whether such a revaluation has been made as per the valuation report given by the registered valuer. This concept of registered valuer you will be you know uh, reading in the companies act. We are having separate chapter uh, registered valuers. So alter has to check whether the valuation is based on the valuation report given by the registered valuer or not. And in case the change is 10% or more, then auditor has to report the amount of change. Here important point is change means either positive change or negative change both has to be uh, you know reported if positive change of 10 percent or more or negative change of 10 percent or more both has to be reported and in case there are any binami proceedings pending against the company as per prohibition of binami property transaction act same has to be reported by the auditor hope this is clear these are the five reporting aspects under Clause 1, property, plant and equipment. Hope this is clear. Moving to clause number 2, inventory. 
now regarding inventory auditor has to report whether the management has physically verified this inventory at reasonable intervals or not and during such verification if dis discrepancy of 10% or more is found whether the same has been properly dealt in the books of accounts or not even that has to be reported and auditor should also report uh, check whether company has been granted a working capital loan of 5 crores or more during the year in case working capital loan of 5 crores or more has been granted then the auditor has to report whether the stock statements that has been submitted by the entity to the banks or in agreement with the books of accounts or not this is newly introduced under caro 2020 hope this is clear that is clause number two related to inventory moving to clause number three which is related to loans investments and guarantees here first of all auditor has to see whether company has granted any loan or guarantee during the year here clause 3 and clause 4 both deals with loans and guarantees granted by the company hope this is clear we also having clause 9 which deals with loans taken by the company okay clause 3 deals with loans and guarantees granted by the company now auditor has to see first of all whether the company has granted any loan or guarantee during the financial year in case company has granted loan or guarantee during the year auditor has to report the aggregate amount of loan that has been granted to subsidiaries joint ventures associates okay this has to be reported separately and also loans or guarantees granted to others okay these both has to be reported separately hope this is clear and this reporting requirement is not applicable to a company whose business is giving loans okay if the major business or principal business activity of the company itself is to give loan like nbfc then for such type of company this first point is not applicable hope this is clear and in case the company has granted any loan or any guarantee or has made any investment during the year auditor has to check whether terms and conditions of such loan guarantee investment are prejudicial to the interest of the entity in case the terms are prejudicial then auditor has to report the same next auditor should also report whether schedule of repayment has been specified in relation to the loans that have been granted by the company and whether the receipts are regular or not and if there has been overdue in receiving the amount for a period of 90 days or more then auditor should report the same see state the amount overdue for more than 90 days and what are the steps that have been taken by the company for the purpose of recovering the same even that has to be reported and in case the company has granted any demand loans or any loans without schedule of repayment then auditor has to report in respect of those loans total amount of such loans granted total amount of such demand loans or loans without repayment schedule uh, granted by the company and what is the percentage of such loans to the total loans granted by the company that has to be reported and auditor should also report whether any loans have been renewed during the year that means let's say company has granted a loan uh, for tenure of five years five years has been completed but still the loan has not been repaid back to the company now what the company will do is company will grant a fresh loan in order to repay the existing loan or company will extend the existing loan itself so whether any uh, type of this situation has taken place during the year if such situation has been taken place then auditor has to report the same okay amount of loan that has been renewed and percentage to the total uh, loans of the company even this reporting point is not applicable to the companies whose principal business is granting loans these are the reporting requirements under clause 3 loans guarantees and investments even clause 4 is related to loans guarantees and investments now clause as per clause 4 auditor has to check whether the company has complied with the requirements of 
section number 185 and 186 of the companies act 2013 generally section number 185 186 deals with loans guarantees investments of the company whenever company gives loans guarantees it must comply with these two sections this has to be verified by the auditor next clause number 5 deals with deposits now in relation to deposits auditor has to check whether the company has complied with the directives that have been issued by the rbi and whether the company has complied with the provisions of section number 73 to 76 of the companies act 2013 basically section number 73 to 76 is the deposits chapter under companies act that has to, those provisions has to be complied by the company and in case any order has been passed by company law board mclt or rbi even that order has to be complied by the company this has to be checked by the auditor that is clause number five moving to clause number six cost records now first of all auditor has to check whether the company is mandated by central government to maintain cost records under section 148 subsection one if the company is mandated to maintain whether the company is uh, maintaining the cost records or not that has to be checked under clause number six moving to clause number seven statutory dues basically you can divide this statutory dues into disputed statutory dues and undisputed statutory dues examples of statutory dues income tax gst pf esi all these are examples of statutory dues now coming to the undisputed statutory dues auditor has to check whether the company is regular in depositing the undisputed statutory dues if the company uh, if there is any overdue of depositing undisputed statutory dues for a period of more than six months then as on the balance sheet date then auditor has to report the same under caro and coming to the disputed statutory dues if the company has not deposited the statutory due to, uh, statutory due because of existence of dispute then auditor has to report the forum with which the dispute is lying okay forum where dispute is pending and amount involved in that dispute that has to be reported by the auditor with respect to statutory dues clause number seven moving to clause number eight undisclosed income now auditor has to check whether the company has surrendered any undisclosed income under income tax act generally income tax act has brought a particular scheme known as a disclosure of undisclosed uh, income scheme now auditor has to check whether company has disclosed any unrecorded income of the company as per that scheme and if the company has surrendered the income as per that scheme auditor should verify whether the same has been now properly recorded in the books of accounts or not hope this is clear that is clause number eight undisclosed income moving to the clause number nine default in repayment of loans this this default is related to loans that have been accepted by the company clause three is related to loans that has been given by the company now under clause nine auditor has to see first of all whether the company has default uh, defaulted in repayment of the loan in case it has defaulted then auditor has to report the name of the lender to whom the company has defaulted and what is the amount involved in the default and what are the days of default okay how many uh, days the company has delayed in uh, making the payment and what is the type of loan term loan or working capital loan then auditor should also report whether the company has been declared as a willful defaulter like vijay malya kingfisher okay even that has to be repo uh, reported by the auditor under clause number nine then auditor has to report whether company has properly utilized the funds raised from loans generally let's say company raises uh, a term loan for constructing the factory then that proceeds must be used only for the purpose of constructing the factory okay that is auditor has to verify the end use of funds in case there is any diversion of funds the auditor has to report the same okay end use of term loans next whether company has used short term funds for the purpose of long term purpose okay company has raised a working capital loan and you working capital loan is a short term loan and utilized this loan for the purpose of construction of factory this should not be done in case uh, this type of situation is found by the auditor auditor has to report the same under clause number nine and if the company has raised any loans during the year by pledging the securities of 
its subsidiaries associates and joint ventures the same has to be reported by the auditor under clause number 9 and in case the company has failed to repay these types of loans even that has to be reported under clause number 9 hope this is clear next clause number 10 end use of funds generally auditor has to verify whether the funds raised from ipo and fpo has been utilized for the purposes that have been uh, you know communicated to the public or not in case the funds have been diversified for some other purposes the auditor has to report the same okay in regard in, in, in regarding to this auditor has to report details of delay and subsequent rectification if made by the company and the same reporting in relation to funds raised from preferential allotment and private placement along with checking the end use of funds in relation to preferential allotment and private placement auditor should also check the compliance with section number 42 and section number 62 of the companies act 2013 next clause number 11 related to fraud now auditor has to check whether any fraud by the company or on the company has been reported or noticed during the year if the fraud has been noticed then auditor has to report the nature of fraud and amount involved in that fraud and also under section 143 subsection 12 there is a fraud reporting that the auditor will make to the central government okay that reporting will be made under form ADT 4 in case the auditor has filed form ADT 4 auditor has to report the same even in clause 11 also this is even this is a new requirement and whether auditor considered whistleblower compliance basically whistleblower mechanism is a complaint uh, rising mechanism within the company in case uh, any whistleblower complaints have been received whether auditor has considered the same or not even this has to be verified uh, reported by the auditor that is clause number 11 moving to clause number 12 nidhi companies with respect to nidhi companies auditor has to check whether the nidhi is maintaining net on funds to deposit ratio of 1 is to 10 and 10 percent unencumbered term deposits and in case there is any default in payment of interest or repayment of deposits the same has to be reported by the auditor under clause number 12 moving to clause number 13 related party transaction if the company has entered into any related party transaction the auditor has to check whether compliance with provisions of section number 177 and 188 of the companies act have been made or not okay section number 177 and 188 moving to clause number 14 internal audit this is a new clause basically auditor has to check whether the internal audit mechanism of the company is incomes incommensurate with the size and nature of business of the company okay whether commensurate with size and nature of business of the company and whether statutory auditor has considered the internal audit report or not whether internal audit report is considered by the statutory auditor okay moving to clause number 15 which is related to non-cash transactions basically in relation to non-cash transactions example barter the auditor has to check whether the compliance of provisions of section number 196 have been made or not section number 190 sorry 192 192 of companies act 2013 has been made or not moving to clause number 16 which is related to nbfc generally if you want to start a business of nbfc you need a registration certificate from rbi under section 45 ia so auditor has to check whether the company is required registration certificate as per section 45 ia of rbi act or not in case required whether the same has been received or not that has to be reported by the auditor and auditor should also report whether company has conducted the business of nbfc without obtaining such a certificate of registration nbfc business conducted without such a, uh, obtaining such a certificate of registration that has to be reported next if the company is a core investment company then there will be certain conditions that has to be satisfied by the company whether those conditions have been satisfied by the company during the year or not that has to be reported and if the group is containing more than one core investment company the number of core investment company has to be reported by the auditor okay if the group is having more than one core investment company then how many number of core investment companies are present in the group that number has to be reported under clause number 16 okay next clause number 17 cash losses auditor has to see whether the company has incurred cash losses during the year if yes then what is the amount of cash loss that has to be reported by the auditor generally cash loss is the loss that has to be calculated without considering depreciation and other 
non cash expenditures next clause number 18 deals with the resignation of the previous auditor whenever previous auditor resigns the incoming auditor has to report whether the considerations and issues of the previous auditor that is the resign, uh, resigning auditor have been considered by the incoming auditor or not see consideration of issues object objections of outgoing auditor by the incoming auditor that has to be reported under clause number 18 moving to clause number 19 going concern now the auditor has to report whether in his opinion the company is able to pay the amount of liabilities that will accrue the accrue to the company in the coming 12 months whether company is able to uh, you know uh, meet those liabilities or not that has to be reported by the auditor in the opinion of the auditor no material uncertainty regarding liabilities falling due in one year from the date of balance sheet that is clause number 19 moving to clause number 20 related to unspent csr we can bifurcate this un unspent csr into two categories one is unspent csr related to ongoing projects and another one is unspent csr related uh, related to other than ongoing projects now the amount of unspent csr related to ongoing projects has to be deposited in a separate special bank account as per section number 135 subsection 6 of the companies act and the amount of unspent csr related to other than ongoing projects must be deposited in the specified fund uh, of schedule 7 of companies act 2013 within six months from the end of financial year that is clause number 20 auditor has to see whether this deposit has been made by the company within that time or not auditor has to report the same next clause number 21 adverse remarks in car of group companies basically this clause is applicable to consolidated financial statements now if in the car of a subsidiary company a particular paragraph has been uh, you know is given as an adverse remark by the auditor now that paragraph number has to be reported in the caro of consolidated financial statements of the company see whether any adverse remarks in the caro of companies included in the consolidated financial statements let's say there is a limited okay now for a limited there is subsidiary one subsidiary two and associate now con combining all these financial statements consolidated financial statements will be prepared now in the car of subsidiary one let's say particular clause clause number six has been reported adversely by the respective auditor now the auditor of consolidated financial statement must specify this paragraph number in the caro report of consolidated financial statement as i have already told you that the caro is not applicable to consolidated financial statement except clause 21 clause 21 is only applicable to consolidated financial statement so under that clause 21 auditor of consolidated financial statement has to report the name of the respective subsidiary or associate and the respective clause number which has been reported adversely by the uh, relevant auditor that has to be reported by the auditor of consolidated financial statement see if yes then indicate details of that company and paragraph number containing adverse remark hope this is clear this is a revision of caro 2020 and if you wanted to purchase classes you can visit our website lecturepedia.in and you can place your order okay take care bye bye